So I realized while making another video that it was May of 2010 that I bought this saw. So it'll be 10 years this month I've owned it with moderate to heavy use. It's well built, well made, I would say above average for a plastic homeowner saw. But that's not what makes this saw great. When I first saw this thing at Home Depot 10 years ago, honestly, I thought it was gimmicky. I really was skeptical about how well it would work, and I've been surprised ever since. The way the lower handle is geared to the bottom guard, it provides backing so that your work that you're trying to cut is not getting pushed away from you as you apply pressure with the chain. It pulls it into the chain, which is what makes this tool great. And it'll cut through just about anything up to three or four inches softwood, two or three inches hardwood. That's oak right there. So the bottom handle is geared to the bottom guard and they move simultaneously. The top one's spring loaded and the bar is rigid with the top handle. So it gives you kind of a surprising level of control over the material you're cutting as you're cutting it. It's actually better than a normal saw in that respect. It's got some safety features. The handles lock together. I never really use that one, but the best safety feature is that both trigger buttons have to be depressed for it to work. One, it won't work with only one. So you have to have both hands on the tool for it to go for the motor to start, which is, in my opinion, a pretty good safety feature. You're not gonna accidentally run it and hit something unlike the other saws available. Like this one has no safety. It has a lockout, that's it. The chain is a quarter inch pitch, low profile with 42 drive lengths, and it has 50 thousandths gauge. And they still sell replacement chains for these. It's on a six inch bar. You can get them straight from Black & Decker. I've only ever had to change it twice in the 10 years I've owned it. And I attribute that to those guards preventing the chain from being dipped in the rocks and dirt all the time, like with a normal chainsaw. You can sharpen the chain with it on because it will turn. You can spin it by hand, take the battery off, lock the top up with a spring clamp, and use a 4.5 millimeter file at 30 degrees, and then cut the rakers at 25 thousandths. And you can sharpen it with it on the saw just fine. When it comes to oiling, it's got this cool little trap door, and underneath is the oil port, which has another dust cover in it that they give you an oil bottle originally. I got a pistol grip oiler and what I do is mix a whatever chain and bar oil with, I cut it with 10% uh, Marvel mystery oil. Uh, it just helps keep it flowing a little better. And additionally, uh, that stuff has a distinctive odor, that Marvel mystery oil, so you can smell it as you're cutting and rest assured that the chain and bar are getting the oil. Disassembly for cleaning or maintenance or replacing the chain or whatever have you. I was happy to discover that the combination, standard combination chainsaw wrench fits the flange bolts that retain the bar and the bar cover. So that's the same one I use on my Husqvarna. That was kind of a nice feature. You just take the cover off, and then the you can see it's all dirty. I haven't cleaned it in a while. So it's got this spring-loaded retainer that holds the bar snug as you tighten it. So you've got to release that little spring-loaded thing, pull it back towards the drive sprocket, it's directly in front of the drive spot sprocket. And then that allows the bar to come loose and then you can walk the chain up over the back side of the drive sprocket and get it out of there. One thing you'll notice, this has a steel drive sprocket. A lot of electric chainsaws have a plastic assembly in there which does not hold up. So at this point, I just usually just blow it out with compressed air 
just clean all the surfaces with an air compressor and that little spring loaded thing, make sure there's nothing wedged in there. Same thing with the chain cover. Uh, always wear safety glasses when you're cleaning something like this with compressed air. And then the bar, and you can see where the port is, where the oil, bar oil discharges and goes into the bar. Make sure and get all, mine had some stuff in it right there. That's where it actually oils the bar from the body of the thing. That's where the bar gets its oil, that little port on the saw right there. Here's my production date, 2009. I guess I have had it for 10 years. So it's easiest to put the chain on the bar first and then slip the assembly in through the jaws. And it's a little tricky because you have to compress that spring-loaded thing to give you enough room to slip the back of the chain around the teeth on the drive sprocket. Once the chain's all the way on, just kind of check it a little and go ahead and put the chain cover on. Make sure to line up those two pivot points with the holes on the other side of the chain cover on the underside of it. Run your screws in, tighten as you're checking the chain tension just as you would any other normal, even gas powered saw. At this point, you want to run it with a battery, check the tension one more time and you're good to go. Even though the 18 volt version of this saw has been discontinued by Black & Decker, you can still buy the 20 volt, and I would in a heartbeat. Parts are still available. I bought this thing 10 years ago, and I've abused it a little bit. I've loaned it out. Um, I've used the heck out of it, and what can I say? I absolutely love it. It still works fine after 10 years. See my other videos for adapters I've made to use DeWalt batteries on it. This tool is the first thing I load in the truck if I know I've got to go deal with a fallen tree mess.